some more concrete basics. All right, today we're going to talk about some of the stuff that goes into your concrete. Um, first of all, we talk about expansion and contraction. Um, if you know anything about expansion and contraction, you know that all materials expand and contract. Concrete is no different. So when you put something into your concrete, you have to make sure that it expands and contracts at the same rate as the concrete so that it doesn't break your concrete apart. So, and to control that, we put two types of joints. There's control joints and there's expansion joints. A control joint is a joint that is just cut to a certain depth, half inch, one inch. Um, and what that does is if your concrete cracks, then the crack will run along that uh, that control joint that you put in there and it won't be visible on the surface of the concrete. The other one is what they call an expansion joint. If you uh, let, uh, place a large pore, or, um, a large area of concrete, that when it gets, if it's outside, where it gets really hot or really cold, during the, during the summertime it's going to expand a lot, or in the wintertime it's going to shrink a lot. So you have to put expansion joints in there. So if you put two pieces of, uh, two pores really, but one right up against the other, and they don't have anywhere to expand, the crack where they meet is going to buckle. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been driven down the highway and saw where parts of the highway have been buckled. Well, that's from expansion, um, where it got really hot and the concrete expanded and then it's like uh, an earthquake, you know, where two plates are co combining, they're colliding, and they're, they make volcanoes. Well, that's pretty much what that expansion joint is there to do. They put a, a material in there so that it allows the concrete to expand and contract without one slab pushing against another slab. Okay, so what do we put in our concrete? The first thing we're going to talk about is rebar. Rebar is a metal, a steel. Um, the reason they use steel is because steel has the same expansion rate as the concrete. So if the concrete expands, the rebar will expand also. Um, if you put something in there that doesn't expand at the same rate, then what's going to happen? One's going to be pulling against the other one, it's going to weaken your concrete, and eventually it's going to break. So you have to have something that expands at the same rate or contracts. Okay, size. What size do you put in there? Well, specifications will tell you what determines the size of your rebar? Well, what are you going to use the concrete for? Are you going to have a building on it? Are you going to drive on it with a half ton truck or three quarter ton truck? Or are you going to put a semi on it or um, heavy equipment or heavy machinery? Um, that will determine what size uh, rebar you're going to put in there. And rebar is normally, you'll see it, it'll say number three or a number four or a number five, and so on. All that means that this is three-eighths, uh, four-eighths or a half, five-eighths. Five eight, five um, if you had a number eight, that would be eight-eighths, which is one inch. Okay, so that's how the rebar is identified. Um, the most common grade of rebar is 420 steel, because not all steels are the same you want to make sure that you have one that's going to work and that's the most common is the 420 grade steel. Um, in most applications you're probably going to use a, a 4 or maybe a 5 again depending on what you're going to put on the concrete. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about is welded wire. Welded wire can be used in place of rebar. Welded wire comes in squares. The two most common are 6x6 six six or 4x4. Four four. And the wire gauges vary. Again, you can go from a small gauge wire to a very large gauge wire. 
You can buy them in rolls, or you can buy them in panels um, if you go with the thicker stuff. So this can be replaced by this. Again, you want your welded wire to be steel so that it has the same expansion and contraction as the concrete that you're, you're placing. All right. Um, one thing I forgot to mark, mention with rebar, wherever the rebar crosses, you have to tie it. And they use a wire tie to tie these connections together. Okay, you don't want one free floating and another one free floating. Um, another thing is that the rebar needs to be in the center of your concrete. Okay? I've seen a lot of times where guys will either put the rebar or the wire mesh, they'll lay it on the ground and they'll walk all over it and then they'll pour the, uh, the, the concrete will come out of the truck and they don't pull the wire up into the center of the concrete. Um, it's not doing you any good in there. Okay, So make sure you get it up into the center, whether you use something to hold it up there or you pull it up there as the, the concrete comes out of the chute, you lift it up and make sure it gets in the center. So very important for the strength. Okay, What does the rebar and the welded wire do? I'm sure you've all seen a driveway or something and it's got a big crack in the middle where the it, the two pieces are kind of sliding apart and there's a one inch or an inch and a half gap in there. Well, that's an unreinforced roadway or driveway. What the rebar does is that it'll keep that crack to a minimum so it doesn't the slab doesn't slide apart. If you're your ground shifts and one starts tipping one way and the other one's tipping the other way you won't get a huge wide crack in there you'll just get a little tiny crack because the rebar or the wire mesh is going to keep the slab from spreading apart okay so that's one of the main issues or reasons why you want to put reinforcing in there is to keep <coughs> your slab from going to pieces and then one won't shift up or down um, because of maybe you you park in the same spot all the time and that gets compacted but the rest of the driveway doesn't and then you know it wants to shift and you'll get a little crack but you won't get a big crack where it you know one's half an inch or an inch taller than the other one okay <clears throat> so welded wire or rebar now other things can be used also they've been using now these are mixed directly into the concrete in the truck before it's uh, before it's poured out so you can use plastic, and what these are, it's just little plastic fibers. It's like fiberglass fibers or nylon, it's little fibers, and they dump them in there and they mix them up, and it acts like rebar, it, it um, keeps things from spreading apart, okay? So if you don't want to put rebar or wire mesh in there, you can have, have them add the plastic or fiberglass or nylon fiber, they're just little, they look like little hairs and you they're mixed in with the in the mixer and then they're poured out and they hold the concrete together like the wire and the rebar does but it doesn't give it the strength that the rebar or the wire mesh would so um, it helps hold it together but it's not quite as strong as these other two um, methods all right the next one is we're going to talk about is compression and tension if concrete is laying flat on the ground it's considered to be in compression and you can put a lot of weight on concrete and it won't break okay so it's very strong in that in that format when it's laying flat on the ground okay but what happens when you have to span well you put weight in the middle of this between, let's say you have um, some piers that your concrete is sitting on and you're, you, let's say you don't reinforce that, okay? This, this beam may collapse under its own weight because if it's not reinforced, the concrete is so heavy that it, 
that'll collapse under its own weight, okay? Concrete's heavy. It weighs, you know, 3,000, 4,000 pounds per cubic yard, so it's quite heavy. So it has to, if you're going to span any distance, then you need to reinforce it. You need to put your rebar in there. So if you ever watch, drive by and watch them when they're building a bridge, you see all the rebar that goes in there. If they didn't put all that rebar in there, that bridge would collapse. Okay, the, the concrete wouldn't hold anything. But if I just lay it on the ground like this, it will support a lot of weight. Okay, depending on, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, what's the ground? Is it clay, sand, rock? What is that? That has a, a determining factor on it. Um, how, what's the mix on the concrete? 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 PSI. So there's a ton of factors that go into figuring out what type of reinforcing you need for concrete on what surface, okay? So it's just not, you know, one size fits all. Um, you know, if you're in a part of the country that's got sandy soil, your concrete pool, uh, is going to be different as far as base of it, what goes underneath it, than somebody who lives um, where it's mostly rock or clay or something else. Then it makes a big difference what happens or underneath it. But again, you can put a lot of weight on a concrete slab, but if you do if you do something like this bridge, then you need to definitely reinforce it a lot. Okay? So, very important that you pay attention to expansion and contraction. Make sure you cut your control joints and your expansion joints if your, if your slab is large enough. Rebar. Um, make sure you pick a good size. Make sure that you tie everything together. Make sure you're using a 420 grade steel. Um, if you're going to use the wire mesh, you can use a 6x6 or 4x6. You can use, you know, anywhere from 12, 14, 12, um, and bigger wire. So you can get mesh that's, you know, half an inch if it's welded together. These are welded together, these spots are. Um, if you don't, you can, if you just need a little extra help, you can put the plastic the fiberglass or the nylon in there. Um, make sure that you know what your, your um, concrete is going to be in compression or tension because you're putting force here which is driving that out or this is coming together so compression and tension so that's the next step in concrete basics